Hey everybody, it's Eric, and thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And today I have a special guest in the studio with me, Ben from Wiseman Company. Welcome. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Eric. I've got Chris. I also have Seth running the board, and I've got actually our buddy Josh, who likes to shoot with us, and he came to visit from Madisonville, Tennessee. Texas. Texas. He came from Texas. <laughs> Just kidding. He came from Tennessee. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and jump off with the headline that we're going to talk about. Is the feared gang boss, Barbecue, now the most powerful man in Haiti? Scroll down. Uh, this is from The Guardian. Oh, blast. Gosh, put Seth on the board. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Merle's in the paparazzi hunting. Sl- he rules like the Argentinian guerrilla Ernesto Che Guevara. Che Guevara. Um, in interviews, he poses as a God fearing Caribbean Robin Hood and celebrates freedom fighters. Fidel. Car- okay, this is an opinion piece. Who anyway, wrote this? This guy. All right. So over the past. Pa- past five years, a Haitian outlaw who has emerged as the main spokesman for the gang uprising against Prime Minister Ariel Henry has welcomed a succession of foreign reporters to his gangland domain, hoping to justify what he calls his noble, if bloody, crusade to defend his country's famished urban poor. So that's actually important to think about, about uh, why is he even popular right now. By the way, the uh, Prime Minister of Haiti has fled the country. He is no longer there. That's why Barbecue is now in power. They asked him to come back. The Who's they? America. They're like, yep, go ahead and go back. He's like, no, nah, nah, I'm pretty nah. comfortable where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, he says, I'm not a thief. I'm not involved in ki- kidnapping. I'm not a rapist. I just carry out a social fight uh, and eat people. Uh, and he sat, sat outside a bullet pocked house. Um, yeah. A lot so, of takeaways from this. What, what is <laughs> barbecue? Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a power vacuum in Haiti right now. You know, yeah. power hates a vacuum, right? Yeah. By the way, side note. And this is real. You can get a flight from Houston to Haiti for seventy-five dollars. Right Are you now. serious? Yeah. So, hey, scroll up and let's look at this guy's kit. Let's see how his kit looks. He's an absolute clown. <laughs> look at this. Uh, oh, poor barbecue. Look at like him. He's got a nice what a hot mess. For his multi-tool. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's all black hawk gear. Not even, dude. Look at that. Uh, maybe some of it. I do. I know some guys that would take that M16 though on the right there. Yeah, that's a Galil. Like he's rocking a Galil. Is it a short? But the M16 on the right. Is it a short Galil? I don't know. Scroll down a little bit. We might be able to see a little bit more of the picture. Oh, that's uh, it. He's got the knuckle gloves though, so he means business. I don't know why. What's the obsession with knuckle gloves? Like anything that's like movie We're related. People out, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know what that did? The knuckle gloves in Iraq when guys were getting blown up with IEDs, it would melt. And so when they would try to take your glove off, it would completely deglove your entire hand. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, so they said they started making fire retardant gloves. Seth, can you Google that them. quick? Just kidding. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't Google that. The glove hand. <laughs> but it goes uh, to show, like, it, first off, how did barbecue get in power? Obviously, the prime minister was corrupt as all get out to the point where people are going to barbecue for the solutions and saying the prime minister can't figure it out because it is so poor. I mean, I'm, I'm be- guessing the hurricane didn't really help him out. Yeah, well, and then right. combine or, that or, with like a spiritual darkness that's there because the, all of those people believe in voodoo, that's black the, magic. That's the national uh, the yeah, religion. religion. Is it really witchcraft. voodoo? Yeah. It's black really? it's witchcraft, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the, the amount of charity that's been sent to Haiti over the years is unreal, and it still remains a giant dump. Clinton Foundation, also very heavily invested in Haiti, just yeah. so everyone knows. Um, but those funds obviously never get to the people that need them in Haiti. There's actually missionaries trapped there right now. Oh, that's right. They yeah. A, they uh, tried to get the State Department to pull them out. No reply. Yeah. Mm-hmm. State Department Figures. doesn't have a very good uh, track record with pulling Americans out of hostile countries lately. What happened to that? Like, it, it was one of those things, like, we would move heaven and earth. Remember Jessica Lynch? Uh, Early yeah, Iraq. Remember yeah. that? Remember Brittany Grinder? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they we, actually got her out, though. Yeah, they, they did get her, did her out. Really? Yeah, yeah, they traded her. Dude, what happened? What happened? What happened? Well, when it's, uh, I mean, I would say when it's Christians, they don't care because remember all the Christians left in Afghanistan. Oh, never so, did anything about no, it that. It was just straight up Americans as well. It's all, yeah. it's all political. It's all talking points for you know, them chalking up a W, right? But when it comes to something that doesn't align with their political beliefs or religious beliefs, yeah. Well, back, yeah, back to Eric's original question, why is barbecue here? And everyone take, take, a no- take notes here. Barbecue's in power because he has the most currency, and the currency is violence. In this type of situation, mm-hmm. whoever has the most violence or the monopoly on violence, you're the king of the castle. 
Mm. And the only thing that these kind of people understand is violence. And barbecues the king right now. <laughs> do you think do you think that this is something that can happen in the states? Abs- yep. Absolutely. I mean, you see it a little bit in Connecticut. You saw it during Katrina. Katrina is always like the the big petri dish for WROL without rule of law because it was just the wild west i mean you had law enforcement taking guns you had people not letting their guns be taken crime was through the roof they were isolated um now in connecticut since they don't have officers you see these kind of like pop-up militias patrolling the streets pittsburgh just recently announced i think from the hours of 3 a.m mm-hmm. and 7 a.m there won't be anybody responding to calls yeah so you're yeah. on your own folks i mean yeah. my wife's from pittsburgh and after reading that, she couldn't even imagine such a case. Pittsburgh is a big city. That's it, huge. Isn't it dangerous? Like, it's super dangerous. It's, it's already kind of a dangerous city. I mean, cities in general are dangerous. Sure, but. sure. I mean, Pittsburgh's more of a blue-collar city, so it's probably one of the, you know, least dangerous, if you can even say that. But yeah. If the bad guys know no one's coming to stop them, you get barbecue. That's what you get. Uh, well, the Biden administration is also funding... Uh, I don't know how many of these Haitians coming here and releasing them in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm, Ron DeSantis isn't doing anything about it. Big old Daddy D. Supposedly, they've already caught, I think it's like 20 boats full of Haitians on yeah, the, the border. The Navy picked them up or something yeah. like that. Or the, dude, I, yeah. I, I, don't, I just don't understand. When you have a guy that literally eats people just straight as a fear tactic, that's well, the only reason he's doing according it. According to NBC, he's not a cannibal because. People isn't the main part of his diet. They literally <laughs> said that. He doesn't eat people all the time, so you can't call him a cannibal. No, he, sub- he supplements with veggies and, you know, yeah. rice. So, and, I mean, yeah. if, if you're eating your boogers only sometimes, like a snack, you're no. not a booger eater. No, no. <laughs> no, no. No, you definitely are. You just like eating some salty things. Oh, that's I eat other hell. stuff, too, so it's not, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm not a booger But that eater. literally was their cover for barbecue. He's oh not God. a cannibal because Why he doesn't cover eat. that? Why cover him? I don't know. I don't know. What do you get s- out of it, right? Yeah, what's the benefit? Hey, s- side quest for this podcast. If you were a warlord, what would your warlord name be? Mm. Chris would be Potato Chip. <laughs> no, it would be Battle Street Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Street Shark, yeah. No, I'm not uh, accepting that name. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Street <laughs> Sorry, Street <laughs> Shark. <Pito. laughs> do you remember Street that show? Shark. Street Shark? Yeah. Yeah, I remember it. <laughs> Yeah, he just kind of like walled around and he thought he was yeah. like big Dude, and strong. Yeah. Case, I was like, on after well, Captain Planet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mine would be Captain Planet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. What a toad. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'd probably be Roach. Ah, uh, just straight up Roach. Just Roach. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a simple thing. Like, it's just carried on from the military and it was literally because my last name mm. and it, they, nobody could pronounce it. So it just <laughs> became Roach. See, that's a cool one. Yeah. Street Shark down there. <laughs> Hey, let's do a poll. Street Shark or Captain Planet? Uh, <laughs> both are yeah. equally miserable. Yeah, both are, <laughs> both both are terrible. Yeah. yeah, put it in the comments. What do you think uh, Chris's uh, apocalypse name cool. should be? It'd be cool. I can dye my hair green, get a buzz cut. <laughs> you, you know what yeah. I can say? They're going to be like, all right, guys, all the gatherers are going out with Street Shark, so make sure you, <laughs> you sign in to the, uh, the village uh, <laughs> scribe. Oh, gosh. Scribe. And you just imagine that I got assigned to Street Shark again. <laughs> no, it's like, <laughs> all right, I'm picking carrots with Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> Where's barbecue? I want to go with him. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a fun place. Yeah, I mean, as far as like Hades, Hades always had corruption issues, but their poor has been so poor, and they're har- they're having a hard time getting food to the people. It- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so at this point, it's like, are they going to be eating people for sustenance soon? Yeah, and that's what happened in Somalia. Remember, they would the gangs would seize all the aid that was coming in Mm -hmm. and then they would divvy it up. That's how they had all the power. So I imagine barbecue, you know, he's divvying out all the ham hocks right now to everybody else. Dude. Uh, I I just, I mean, well, actually all of the aid is probably going to Gaza. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They made Ukraine. Well, they have a port that they're building and we had a friend of ours who told us that it's a military port. Mm. Oh, right, nah, right. Yeah. But it's like a, isn't it like a hasty military port? Is yeah. that what he was saying? It was yeah. like a, basically like a flotilla. 
Yeah, it's it's like I, I guarantee it'll probably be like a cover for more military presence and you know. But garrison. according according to him, he said you'll have to have American troops on the ground to secure it and guard it. And, yeah. yeah. So you're gonna see that. I mean, that's not a great optic. Yeah. They probably won't cover it. Well, I mean, I, th- I don't think the Houthis would like that a lot. Um, so it's just the perfect it's the perfect opportunity to be like. Well, how do we get some troops in there? How about uh, you know you want food? We'll bring it to you, and uh, also a couple of AT fours and some Abrams, and uh, yeah, you know, just keep the flow of supplies coming from there. Yeah, just keep yeah. it coming. We can just keep printing more money. Just tons of tax dollars. Yeah. Did we get that? Did that bill get approved for the six hundred billion dollars to Ukraine? Or is that still up in the air? I think they just sent it. Well, they just sent a hundred, a hundred million. I, that was just a Biden executive order thing. I'm pretty sure it was a hundred million to Ukraine. I don't know where that came from. Which is crazy because you got to think about a hundred million dollars is a drop in the bucket. <laughs> We're just printing money. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's just insane. When is it going to stop? When is it going to crack? Um, since we're on the topic of Israel, should we segue into red heifers? Oh, dude, you know what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, let's you know talk. what I'm talking about, Chris. Mm-hmm. Did I you? Don't, have I you? Don't did believe you? it. I don't subscribe to it. You don't? What do you mean? Me and Seth had this conversation with a friend of ours. His Seth, go ahead and Google red heifers for me. Go ahead and tell me about this conversation too. The red heifers was a more of the a Jewish cow. sign of the end times, but it's not a Christian sign of the end times. No, but what is? The sacrifice and the rebuilding of the temple. Yeah, but that, I think that's still more of a Jewish. Guy about the re, no, the rebuilding of the temple. That's hand revelation. Me that, hand me that King James. I'm about to look it up. No. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I think you're right about the rebuilding of the your, temple. But the red hef- sh- there's there's nowhere in the Bible where it talks about red heifers. No, but no. in the Bible in, or in Jewish tradition, they have to sacrifice the red heifer. Once they do the sacrifice again, now they have the rights to rebuild the temple. It's on the Temple Mount. Yeah, that's where they're sacrificing the red heifers. So yes, you're correct. It is not biblical, but according to them, it is a part of their tradition. There's only ever been nine red heifers, and I think the last one was during Moses or something. No, so it was over two thousand over two thousand years, years ago. Huh. Yeah. So eat that and street they've shark. Been, they've been. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to <laughs> your captain plan. Sense, but uh, yeah. So as far as that goes, they are very close to it. The Israeli government finally just started intervening, trying to make sure it's secure and trying to figure out like this whole process. Because this was only this was done on a religious side. Mm-hmm. So they were coordinating everything. The I think the heifer actually came from a ranch in Texas. Yeah, they had four of them. Yeah, and so and they are. That's what they said. Very pure. confident. Yeah, they're pure. Yeah, one of the one of the rabbis actually said, he's like he couldn't believe it. Like they're losing their minds because he's like my my father was a rabbi that trained for this. My grandfather wished for this my great grandfather it's, it's like, like fifth element dude two thousand years of wanting to look for the or trying to find the red heifer like i feel like everything is coming to a point yeah. all around the same time in all different aspects yeah they got the red heifers seven days after the red heifers the eclipse over the united states which will be used for something well how, you said that the eclipse is something different like it's the most rare or yeah something. it's one of the most rare eclipses ever like you obviously will never see it again in our lifetime comes around i don't know when it comes around but it's supposed to be like a it's a daytime eclipse that's where you like wear the sunglasses and everything like that i think but it's just it's really convenient goes over the bible belt i'm just gonna look right at it yeah let's just send need it the special sunglasses to look right at <laughs> no, it no i'm nah, gonna get my binoculars and look at it that's what uh, I'm gonna do. and then they were talking about how like make sure you have like two weeks of food on on yeah, hand. They're prepping two weeks of it. medical. Make sure your, your car is filled up with gas, topped off with gas when it happens. Which doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, it does, but to the everyday person, it wouldn't. But for for me, that's kind of a red flag that they're going to use it for something. Because in the last solar eclipse, I think it was in 2017. I was in South Carolina. Yeah, where it went across the entirety of the United States. And they never say anything about anyone prepping or preparing food or filling up your car with gas. So why are they telling us for this one? Doesn't make any sense. Good point. Real quick, let me just read you the passage from Numbers 19 on the red heifer. Yeah, you might want to write this down, Street Shark. The <laughs> yeah. Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the requirement of the law, that the Lord has commanded, tell the Israelites to bring you a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke. Okay, so this this kind of stuff has been going on for a long time. Like Eric said, every generation is like, oh, maybe I'll be the generation to sacrifice the red heifer. You know, I'll be the next one. They finally get it. Netanyahu finally says, yeah, you can do it on the Temple Mount. They don't let anyone go up there. You know, yeah. like it's, it's – well, they let people go up there. But it's like a – it's hollow, gra- hollow ground for the Israelis. And then seven days later, 
after Passover, they're doing it on Passover, you're going to have this uh, solar eclipse. It's just kind of wild. Like, Well, it's other crazy thing is it's like right now the Muslim community is already up in arms because of what's happening in Palestine. So they're already kind of like, well, we're already at a loss anyway. So let's just go ahead. This is a perfect opportunity to do it. We're, feathers are already ruffled. Let's yeah. just go ahead it'll, and blend it right in. So the thing about the temple being rebuilt is Ch- Revelation chapter 11, and it's verse 1 and 2. And it says, there was given me a rod like unto, there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread under forty, under foot forty and two months. And this will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. I apologize, it's very thick, it's in King James. But, um, so, as far as, like, that is the beginning signs. Once the temple's rebuilt, it's the beginning signs of all of the end times type events. Yeah, but I have a rebuttal to that. So the the that was Old Testament. Jesus died and was the perfect sacrifice. Correct. So that means there is no need for a sacrifice again. Correct. And anything else is a fabrication and an abomination. So them sacrificing the red heifers is an, is a fabrication and abomination. Mm-hmm. So. I don't trust them to follow through with rebuilding the temple if they can't acknowledge, right, the basic fact that Jesus died on the cross and is the Savior. That's mm. already been done. It's already been taken care of. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then what what does that mean then at that passage? All, all we're looking for as believers is a signifying of the times to be able to look for clues about when things are going to start happening. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that happens right before the two witnesses. Mm-hmm. So... You know, these are kind of cues to kind of look for, not to say, like, I agree with the red heifer and all that stuff. It just shows, hey, here's another sign. Timeline. Timeline. It's a timeline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another you, check in the box. So you think it's just still a total nothing burger? You think it's nothing? I don't think it's I don't think it's nothing. It's something to pay attention to, but you have to take it with a giant grain of salt because these are the the Zionists oh, that here, are the, here we go are, here, <laughs> here we go folks sorry are, I apologize for ha, Street Shark have lied <laughs> right yeah and control very powerful entities very powerful mm-hmm. entities and can manipulate things that they want to align with their agenda mm. so, so you have to take it with a grain of salt here's here's something with your grain of salt mm. is it a kosher grain of salt though? yeah mm. is it a kosher grain of salt nice is it sea salt? interjection Himalayan pink so do you think that a lot of the, you know, because at the end of the day, the entire world would go against Israel, according to Scripture, right? So the entire world would go against Israel. What are the culminating events? To me, I'm thinking about what leads up to that point where everybody is like, Israel's got to go down, you know? And I think... Define Israel, define Israel, though. The nation of Israel. Is it the nation of Israel? Because it says it that they will be defeated. It'll be defeated until the gates of Jerusalem. Yeah, and uh, furthermore, even if you don't believe in the red heifers, even if you don't, you know, acknowledge it that it's a sign or it matters. Guess who does? The Muslims. The mm. Muslims see this as treasonous because the Temple Mount is important to them too. Yeah. Uh, so, you, the Houthis and all them have already said like, just the fact that they're going to sacrifice this red heifer is a spit in their face. Yeah, that they shouldn't do it. So, I can't imagine they're going to be thrilled during Passover. Well, and, and well, think about the Iranians, too. I was going to say, that's the other thing that's kind of, that they're waiting on, besides just these red heifers, which come of age, I think, by the end of this year. Mm. Mm. Um, so I don't think they're quite ready. Mm. I think it is... Actually, I think you're right on Blurry Creatures. We're not experts on this, but no. there was a Blurry Creatures episode where they had actual guys who were with the ra- uh, rabbi when they and, found the red and heifer, visited the farm and, and got they, all yeah, the yeah. got all the info. Aren't yeah. they from Texas? The heifers are from Texas. They, they yeah. are. They are. I think in Israel now. I believe the they're going to be of age somewhere. around the time of our elections. Yes. Mm. <laughs> so what are they sacrificing over Passover then? I don't know. Because they are doing it over Passover. They are. That's that's confirmed. They are sacrificing a red heifer over Passover. So maybe mm. this was last year because it came out last year. the The episode they recorded it last year, but it was released. Recently. It could be, so then maybe they're of age. The other thing they needed was the political backing. So if they've been promised by the U.S. That's what that, I said. Hey, you know, go ahead and do your thing. We'll put boots on the ground if it becomes an issue. Mm. Then oh, the it. U.S. I mean, would love that. They, they said for them to build the temple, like, 
for those not aware, it, they don't have to build a brick and mortar. It's not, you know, a huge project. They literally can sacrifice these heifers and then put up a tent in half a day, and yeah. that's the temple. Yeah, mm. they can they can then bless all the tools and all that to do that. It's yeah, it can happen just like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they already have the ephod and everything already. So yeah. so. When Street Shark says, like, <laughs> hey, this doesn't matter, it matters to somebody. Like, it matters to people. Yeah. So, I don't know. You know, you're right, though. Take it with a grain of kosher salt. I don't I don't know. I have no idea. Pink Himalayan. Yeah. yeah. Well, we know who wins in the end, so it doesn't, yeah, doesn't my, matter. Yeah, my, my boomer grandparents always used to say that. Well, I read the back of the book. It's like, yeah, but do you know how bad it gets in the yeah. back of the book? Yeah, I I would say yeah, take it with a giant grain of salt. You know, I, the people that own these again powers, these institutions <clears throat> lie, and they will lie to gain support, gain spotlight for themselves and for themselves only. Where so. are you Where are you getting this information from? I've oh, never I've never yeah. heard of this before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So so. What I think is interesting about the whole red heifer thing, it goes back to the points of there's all these wars and rumors of wars and all of these culminating events. You've got Gog and Magogs all stirred up and they're getting ready to, you know, there's we're, we've never been closer to a global conflict again. Um, but what's crazy is that this global conflict, if it does come, is going to be a nuclear one. So it kind of goes back to in scripture in the old testament where he talks about the flying scrolls Mm, with the woman inside the lead pot um so i think that these are all just things to pay attention to especially if we read the back of the book quote unquote but there's a lot of things that are happening today that the church needs to have answers for um i think that the ufo phenomenon is a bigger piece of the pie than what people are thinking like i think that is going to have a huge part in the end times in terms of the great deception so we can't just look at it within our own little box and go like yep it's going to fit in this you know it's going to come back through this religious group or it's going to come back in this way like start thinking outside the box about what are the evidences of say for example you know things have happened in the past like these uaps or ufo encounters where people are being abducted and you see all the stories say the exact, like they're being told the exact same lie that the serpent told Adam and Eve in the garden. And that's not by, that's by design. It's not an accident. Like they're all saying the same exact thing. And you've even had world leaders like Reagan during that speech to the UN saying like, what would be more unifying than an invading force from outside of this world to bring all of humanity together? Common enemy. Correct. And also a all religions, according to experts, would crumble. So you get re- get rid of the religious divide. And so I think that's something where the church has to have answers through Scripture about what it says to not be deceived by something that could come, for example, the UFO thing. Well, that that's where I think a lot of the Jewish population will be deceived, is because the Savior hasn't come yet. Mm-hmm. So if someone posing as a Savior comes— well, all of them are going to believe that, yeah, you know, because they've already bought into this lie that, you know, Jesus was not the Messiah. Mm. So I think they're very vulnerable to that. Yeah. Um, and also, I think the Muslim population is very vulnerable to that. Mm. Cause yeah. They don't believe that the Messiah is coming yet. That it's it's going to come, and the, the Messiah is going to perform miracles, and that completely aligns with the Antichrist. What the Antichrist is going to do. Yeah. The twelfth Imam is what they gonna say, the twelfth Imam. Yeah. Um, so how does America fit into it? Gone. I think it's to be honest, I think it's Babylon. Or Babylon. I think I, th- I mean to be if you think about it, we are the we are the consumers of the world. We keep the world uh, economy yeah. going because we consume. So all uh, the yeah. merchants come to America to deliver goods because we are the it's the first time in my opinion in human history where a country has consumed so much and continues to consume so much that it literally fuels the economies of every other country on the planet. We do it with our currency, we yeah. do it with our buying power, and it's just junk. We yeah. just buy junk, junk, junk. Yeah. It's also something to think about is us being the whore of Babylon in terms of the the government system of America is we have to also think about the nations will eventually turn against her. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And right now, America has not been the nicest 
friend on the block. You We're know? the bully. Yeah, we've become the bully, where it's like, hey, let me twist your arm with, you know, you do this, or like, dude, we read about in Niger. In Niger, the Nigerian government, or the Niger government said, hey, we want you out. No more military presence. Your two air bases, shut them down. And the the military officials said, we have no plans on leaving. <laughs> yeah. What? It's, yeah. I don't know if you watched the video that Wrangler Star put out, but it's like the seven stages of grief when you find out your government 100%. actually hates you. Yeah. First, you deny it. No, nah, that can't be true. They can't be doing that. That's insane. Yeah. Then you go into bargaining. Well, maybe if we do this, or if we fix this, or if we adjust this, it'll or it'll, vote harder. Vote yeah. harder. We'll we'll fix it, and then you get into anger stage. Mm. You get really pissed off. I was yeah. in anger stage for a very long time. Yes, I was there. I think for you're that. still there. <laughs> no, I'm actually in acceptance. Nice. Mm. I feel, and that, and it's actually a good place to be because it's like, who, I mean, in all reality, that's not where our hope lies, right? Yeah. Nope. It's not. It's not where our grounding is, anyway. Mm. So what? Dif- what? Honestly, what difference does it make? But he made the point that whatever assets you have now, you're working with for probably the next four or five years because you're in the system that just traps people in debt, yep. mm. in this box, right, that you can only get so far b- before hitting the ceiling, right? Yeah. So, you know, being in a place of acceptance, to me, I feel at peace being a Christian because that's not where my hope lies anyway. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I feel like it's it is very accurate to say that it's like the stages of grief. I mean, if you don't have the Lord and you don't have a, a kingdom that is everlasting and you don't belong to that, yeah, you have a lot to be scared about. Yeah, it's futile. It's yeah, gonna end sometime. Fourth turning, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like an old person, you know, like they're gonna die someday. Or we're all gonna die someday. But that's the same thing with a country or an empire. It's like they only have so long to live, and they use there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. And the fourth turning, 2024, is the beginning of winter for the fourth turning. Like, we're not even to the bad part yet. We're not even to the to the hard part. Dude, it's Enjoy March. Now. It's March. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, honestly, I don't get angry about these stories anymore. Yeah. yeah I, I don't, like, people, like, a guy at the gym was, like, telling me, do you hear about the Dominion voting machines, how they're rigged? And it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm not even going to get angry about yeah. that anymore. Yeah. It's like, I, yeah. of course I know. Yeah. Yeah. They're rigging the system. It's always been rigged. It's always but been rigged. It's, that's probably the guy who's going through the beginning stages of grief. I told him that. Yeah. And I was like, you're still in anger. He's like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angry about it. Also, <laughs> no no bags on the gym floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're not wearing closed toed shoes. Yeah. Closed toed shoes. I, you <laughs> tried to distract me, but yeah. 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 Your nipples are showing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I been there. <laughs> I mean, I think, right? Have, has everyone been through those stages? Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah, yeah, I watched that Wrangler Star video when I saw it. I was like, yep, that's me. I I've, mm-hmm. I've gone through that. I mean, we I've we've everyone at this table, yeah. everyone in this room, we've had this conversation over and over and over again. Yep. And it's just like, you know what? I I'm I told Josh on the way here like I am rooting for uh, the repentance of the United States. Mm-hmm. Like, we yeah. haven't had any chickens come home to roost, and we are overdue. Yeah. But the only thing that brings people back to Jesus is not the only thing, but hard times do a good job of bringing people back to God. Yep. You look at yeah. 9-11, the nine twelve project, all that stuff. You know, if everyone's comfy and cozy, what do they need God for, right? What was it, the city of Nevaeh? Nineveh? Nineveh, yeah. N- yeah, Nineveh. Yes. Where your city. You had you had you had the king himself declare like, "Hey, there will be no eating." You know, yep. put on the sacks. You yep. know, sit in ashes. Yep, across the board. Yeah, and Jonah was pissed about it. Yeah, he was yeah. like, he was like, "I want these people to burn," but they repented. Yeah, I just don't see it in the United States. Like, the United States will always have its remnant. Mm. It will. It always will have its real true believers. And I think the herd is being called, so to speak. Yeah, as far as true believers. Um, as it calls for in scripture, yeah. Well, so that's what it'll happen. You know, the we'll one s- thing that you'll see though with that is you'll see a you'll see a lot of false movements coming disguised as Christian movements sure. that are preaching lies or um, doing things like the whole like a psychedelic thing, like oh well, you know, you can get released and you can understand so much more. And it's for those who mixing any like psychedelics and Christianity don't mix. Like it's a, it mm. is a lie. So you have to if you've seen Jesus or quote seen Jesus on psychedelics, you're not. And you're piercing through that spiritual veil and you're looking through on the other side. 
And it's just super dangerous, especially like in the veteran community, they're pushing psychedelics hard for therapy. And also like, oh yeah, you know, like I found God, you know, we had that one. Guy. Yeah. Who's, a, who's they? So it's just a, I've, I know a couple of buddies who are vets that have become Christians, but they also do psychedelics or they went on an ayahuasca trip. And it came back oh, like boy. I found God. Yeah. You know? it's, it's and it's Joe like, Rogan just saying, "Hey, do psychedelics." Yeah, I mean, yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think Joe Rogan's even backed off psychedelics think, a little bit because I agree with them. They are, like Eric said, they're piercing the veil. I yeah. believe what they're seeing is real. Yes, it's real. I just think you're not supposed to be messing with that side. Like yeah. you're out of your element. You know, yeah. you're you shouldn't be doing that. You know, and when uh, when Saul conjured up Samuel, mm. you know, when he after he's dead, yeah, and they were like. Don't don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's real. And, and look Samuel what happened to him. Yeah, shortly yeah, after. Yeah, exactly. He died. Uh, that was the uh, witch of Endor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes yeah. it was. No. He immediately fainted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had to be brought back. Yeah, I mean that goes back to though the only way to combat that is it goes to all the Christians out there. Be bold. You mm. got to be bold and you got to say something and you got to speak the truth because if you're not, you're letting that happen on your watch. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's a big deal and there's people who are being. When hard times come, people will look for any type of hope that yeah. comes their way, sure. and there's going to be a lot of false prophets and false teachers and people who are going to lead them astray, hook, and, hook, line, and sinker, just like I freaking do when I catch big bass. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's better to be chastised here on Earth or let people say what they want here than— Unsubscribed. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. unsubscribed. Yeah. When, when you uh, go for judgment, and then it's like, hey, remember this? Remember when you didn't speak up? Yeah. And guess yeah. what? I'm not going to speak up for you. I mean, yeah. that's— that's my greatest fear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you know, the blood's on mind. your hands. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I actually, I think it was, I had I always had this like daydream, and it would be, <clears throat> I'm standing in heaven, and I'm looking at the Lord, and I'm surrounded by people. Like, it's just like super, super thick crowd, and I'm surrounded by people, and I'm, all, I'm looking at God, and while God is speaking, there's something going on. I, I remember like vividly seeing this in my daydream, where I'm like, someone's looking at me, because everybody should be looking forward at God, right? But we're all there being judged, and I turn and I look, and it's somebody that I know. I can't remember who it was, but I was looking. they were looking at me, not paying attention to God, and I knew that they weren't a believer. Mm, mm. And <clears throat> in, that, in that daydream, they were looking at me with that look of, why did you not tell me? Yep, yep. Mm. So, yeah, I don't want to be in that position. No, ever. no. No. Man. I'm already crying. I can't even make it through a podcast about crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's shark face down there, whatever his name is. <laughs> it's not my fault. Yeah. Mm. All right. But uh, yeah. <laughs> sus, bro. <laughs> mad sus. What are yeah. some of those other words that. For real, for real. What is uh, no mad cap, say? Yeah, no cap. It's straight gas, bro. Straight fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got that blue cheese? Dude, blue that's, cheese. that's jam up, bro. <laughs> jam up. That's what? Chris's favorite. You know all this stuff from the gym, don't you? Yeah. That's yeah. metal, bro. Met huh? Dude, we, metal. Dude, we had cool. stuff was like, that's the bomb, you know? Like, <laughs> remember that? <laughs> yeah, that's the bomb. Do you guys remember some of the slang? Sing. Yeah, sick. Wicked, yeah. legit, yeah, <laughs> legit, yeah. Hey, dude, too legit to quit. Yeah. Mad respect, yeah, mad respect, mad props, respect. Mad props. props. <laughs> yeah, props. props, dude. Oh man, Gen Z yeah, so bro. messed up. Bro. Yeah, but um, I know we're gonna talk about spiritual warfare. Are we gonna go into that not now? Or? No. Oh, okay. So speaking of warfare, not though, yet. Not, not yet, Chris. <laughs> as far as gun. as far as Ukraine, have you guys heard about what the status is in terms of how things are going? Uh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to report it's going terrible. <laughs> you know, it's so funny that people like bash Trump for this bloodbath thing mm -hmm. that he said. It's like a bloodbath. Yeah. yeah. And then they go through all the times that CNN and MSNBC is, but it's a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> oh, the voter turnout. It's going to be predicted to be a bloodbath. We're literally funding one. Yes, and that's my point. It's like, but you're not talking about the actual bloodbath. You are like, you're fueling a war right now that is mm -hmm. just getting Ukrainians slaughtered yeah. by the day. For nothing. Dude, for for absolutely nothing. nothing. And, and no when, reason whatsoever. And when he mentioned that for context, he was talking about the market, the economy yeah, right. would be yeah. a bloodbath. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're trying yeah, to apply Specifically it. the auto industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, well, what's crazy is, is that, that, you know, the Russians are on the offensive right now. So there's a lot of ground that's being lost, which is going to be hard to make back up. But they're throwing Abrams in there to try and help level the, like, kind of counterattack and, and make 
a little bit more level front line to kind of bat, rebalance the lines. And dude, there's I think four or five Abrams already have been destroyed in like a couple of weeks. Jeez. To include Bradleys, which well, by the way, that's more Abrams that have been destroyed since they've been invented. I'm almost positive. That's a good thing we're not paying. So <laughs> my question yeah. is, when do they run out of actual Ukrainian troops to where they have to bring in? A foreign military or somebody else like they keep saying that they're depleted they're losing they're losing it's like well how much do they have possibly who have would left? go the french you bet <laughs> oh we, yeah yeah actually well how many two thousand they said there's two thousand one well they were talking the number that was thrown around was twenty thousand i thought Jeez. oh my gosh and that was only they said that and they said maybe but that was only after it was kind of dug up like hey what's this and they're like oh so it might have even been plans for more Think about this though. The French, when's the last time they've actually been in like legit combat outside of like their special operations dudes? Afghanistan. And that was kind of like, hey, let's get good at patrolling. Yeah, yeah. They weren't, I was going to say yeah. that you're talking big military. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Afghanistan where they, they just did some little stuff, right? Vietnam was the last time they actually had a legit conflict that yeah. they were actually like utilizing things that Yeah, were... it was Vietnam before us, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Weren't they yeah. in there before us? Yep. Yep. Yep, and the Remember V that we were soldiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the French that got tore up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that got tore with up the, with the bugle. But yeah. now, yeah. now you've got now you've got not just the Russian military. You have the Russian military that has gained three years almost of combat experience against a near peer ass force. That means artillery barrages, trench. What's working? What doesn't work? All the Ukrainians that went through NATO training in Britain and all these other countries were literally saying, "One, they're dead because they're like." It doesn't work. It doesn't apply. The NATO tactics mm -hmm. do not apply to this conflict. And so you're seeing Ukrainians now trying to bring those lessons back to NATO to train up NATO troops about modern conflict. Mm. So, you know, I'll tell you right now, like if the French or any NATO force went in there, it would be a, an actual bloodbath. Bloodbath. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the situation in uh, North Africa. The Americans first got into the war mm. and they started using tanks. And was against up against Rommel, who's like a tank mastermind. He's been training. Germany has already been in a war for like three or four years, the and they got yeah. destroyed. The Americans got destroyed in that first tank battle. Mm. Um, watch the movie Patton; it's a great movie. But that, is a great um, movie. Um, that first battle, they got smoked because they just weren't. They didn't know anything. They didn't know tactics about that. It's yeah. a brand new thing that they had to learn. The sad thing is, is to learn tactics, it takes blood. It yeah. takes actual lives to be able to figure out what works and what doesn't. And the problem is, is how many lives do I have to expend before I learn that lesson? And hopefully I haven't expended too many lives before the lessons learned and reapplied for new tactics. So you have, you know, Russia now is battle hardened and they're fighting against the Ukrainian military that's also been battle hardened with combat experience. And they have established TTPs and tactics now, but it's just like. They don't have enough ammo. They don't have enough bodies. So they're running out of resources and Russia is is very quickly, um, you know, gaining ground. And the other thing also is Russia has now become casualty averse, or not casualty averse, which means they're used to combat losses, right? So if you have a military, they will change up their whole tactic if there's too many combat losses, meaning we're not used to losing this many people. Stop and mm -hmm. just try and figure it out and try a different tactic when it's like, hey, that would work, but it's going to take some bodies to make it happen. I guarantee you if this wasn't an election year, and this is just a Ben Brown thought. If this was an election year, I guarantee you we'd overtly have U.S. troops in Ukraine. Yeah. Because if you had U U.S. troops overtly, we know they're there. Mm -hmm. But if we had actual U.S. troops fighting in Ukraine right now, there'd be no chance of a re-election. People would revolt. No one would be sending their sons or daughters. Yeah. But on a lame duck president, yeah. I mean, yeah. why not? They're going to get everything they want. Yeah. I think if, if, if the other side does win the election, I guarantee you there will be boot on the ground in Ukraine yeah. if it still exists. So we're just throwing money at it for God knows how long. I mean, I I get so mad every time they try to pass one of these bills and there's one dang dollar going over to Ukraine, not another dime. I don't know what these politicians don't understand. You're supposed to represent your constituents, not another dollar, not one. Well, they, under not, they understand. It's not worth much anymore anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what what's crazy, though, is you're seeing now, we, people are, it's funny because the media always tries to frame it in this way, but people are like, oh, man, they're using North Korean bullets and North Korean troops to do stuff in the rear. And it's like, dude, 
First off, North Korea has ammo that they've been sitting on for a long time. It needs to be burned up, and they could use the money for food. So it's now I'm going to take, hey, this, this ammo is about to expire. I can sell it. I can use it for food, and that's going to feed the people. And also, right now, they are overdrive preparing for war. So their military has been rebeefing. They've been recalling all the reserves, all that type of stuff, and training people, expanding ammo, expending supplies to be able to get their troops trained up. And they're using that money from the ammo they've been selling to Russia that's already just ammo. Essentially, it's just like, hey, you know, Russia gives them a solution to their problem. The other thing is, is that a lot of people are like, man, they must be running out of bodies. They've been running out of bodies, quote unquote, for two and a half years. And they're still shooting just as many shells and throwing just as many troops on the line to be able to go fight. So what we did in, in NATO is in Afghanistan and Iraq, it was like, hey, man, you know, you know, we're, we're partners and stuff like that. But one of the biggest benefits you get out of a conflict and what you as a military want so badly is combat experience, real world combat experience. So you can update your training, you can update your, your pubs, uh, you can update your tactics to be able to be current. Otherwise, you're just training for a scenario that never happened, never been tested. So we did the same thing in Afghanistan and Iraq. It was like, mm -hmm. hey, man, who wants, uh, you know, uh, Finland? You want to send some troops over? And they do is they take those lessons learned from whatever regiment they send over there, and they update their tactics and have them retrain guys at their home country. North Korea and all these other countries are doing the exact same thing. Hey, you want some modern conflict experience? You want some combat experience? Come on over. Like, we'll put you in this area. You'll get some good combat experience. You can bring it back, and you can continue to um, make your military relevant. I mean, we're literally looking at a time where the tank, honestly, people thought it was, you know, pointless. But tanks are freaking winning the war over there. Trench to warfare. To include drones. Yeah, like, like trench warfare. Everyone's like, well, we'll never do that again. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, World War One? Yeah. Ah, surprise, it's 2024, and we're yeah. doing trench warfare. But I, I think, imagine now, like, the Marines just got, I think they got, they closed down some Abram regiments. Like, they got rid of Abrams because they're like, ah, oh, well, you know, tanks are kind of dying. But yes, they are but they're still being utilized in a very big way. And drones are literally changing war as we know it today. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, you can get... They're talking about delivering packages with drones. Mm -hmm. so Pretty good at finding fish, too. The Russians also came up with something that they were did their first drone evac. They literally landed a drone, had a stretcher on the bottom of it, stuck a Wagner dude inside of it, lifted off, and flew him back to a medevac center. That's wild. Yeah. That's wild. It's crazy. Makes could, me, could you imagine being that casualty, though? Yeah, you're like, uh, I don't I don't want to do this. Knock me out. <laughs> yeah, it says experimental on the yeah. side. You're like, wait a minute. No. Yeah. You're getting yeah, call, in. Call an Uber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it makes me wonder. It's like they've, they've doubled down and tripled down on this so much. It's like they're, we're, we're past the point of no return where they're not going to let Trump win because mm. they've, they've gone so far deep into this. It's how, like, how can you? They, they can't allow it to be reversed. Yeah. They you can't allow it to be reversed. Also, the guy that Trump is running against is a vegetable. Mm -hmm. So you can't have a competent man running against a vegetable. They're not going to let that happen. No. Trump is running against a competent staff that propped up that vegetable. So mm -hmm. he's running against an organization. He's not running against Biden. Well, he's he's run. What people need to understand is he's running against the most powerful political forces that we have ever witnessed on the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. Who also run the FBI, CIA, everything. Yeah. everything. He's literally up against everything. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not even angry. Yeah. I, it's, Are you sure? <laughs> Are you really not? I'm, not, I'm, ju I'm really not. not. I'm just a little disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> not angry, just disappointed. I mean, that's what the Putin interview told me and did for me is it showed from Putin's perspective who is running the country. Not none of the politicians. None of the politicians. It's literally who blew the up the pipeline. Agencies. Who blew up the pipeline? That says it all right there. He didn't yeah. even hesitate. He yeah. wasn't like, well, hmm. Yeah, let me think. We all know it. Mm. Yeah, he was like, well, yeah, it was, yeah, it was your CIA. Yeah. CIA yeah. blew up an allies pipeline, a United States allies pipeline. Uh, does anyone have an issue with this? Like, is anyone concerned? It's just another day, Ben. All right. Yeah, honestly, I'm not, even, at this day, point, I'm I'm not like, I'm even surprised. I'm not even angry. I'm yeah. just disappointed. Yeah. Yep. Freaking so shirt. that yeah. So that <laughs> that I'm under the belief that again said this before a. There's not going to be election. B. They will not let him win. There, there is. I just, 
I, I don't see any way no. of him getting back in. The only way that they would allow him to get back in is to use it as a pretense for civil war to secede, mm. for states mm. to secede. That's Which the they only, have, yeah, they've working that out. Yeah, that's the only play I see is that they allow him to win and then use that as an excuse to just go full Trump derangement, derangement syndrome and just go off the rails and just blow everything up. Mm. Like full secession of states. We're not complying with this. This man's a dictator. He said bloodbath in a sentence. Yep. I asked this to Josh on the way here. I said, best case scenario, you know, Trump gets in. He's not going to. Yeah. Trump gets in. Then what? Yeah. yeah what, then, what, what, then, what, then what do you got? What does that solve for anybody? Mm -hmm. What he did the first time? No. Do you think they're going to let him do anything this time? Mm. No. It doesn't solve anything. We have kicked the can too far down the road. Again, end of an empire. Yeah. Fourth turning. This is it, folks. Yeah. It's whoever wins coming out of these ashes. That's it. The other thing also we haven't even talked about is what's happening in the Far East, and that's China. And the the two months that are upcoming that is the most prime time to invade because of the weather is in April and May. Mm. And there's never going to be another chance to do it because if, let's just say, Trump does get in, or even if it's Biden, the, the U.S. government wants a war so bad with China, they're not going to let it happen, especially if you have four more years guaranteed. Yeah, well, I'm going to stay in office no matter what I do. So, like, China only has this—April this, this April and May is their only chance to do it. So if they're going to do it, they got to do it, one, when the weather's good, and two, when they don't expect retaliation from the West on hitting Taiwan. Hmm. So, you think it'll be this year? Oh, yeah. It's the, it's the only year that you can do it. As far as, like, if you're worried about your number one enemy retaliating and actually doing something— I mean, you got to do it now during the election year. You're not going to do it while Trump's in office? No, no way. Yeah. Nope. No way. And also, the the new president that got elected in Taiwan is anti-CCP. So mm -hmm. there's no way of negotiating and talking that mm -hmm. out. And just for the viewers, like, I'm not, I'm not pro-Trump, and I don't think anyone here is like, oh, uh, Trump's my savior. It's just... Looking at the the big picture of this, you know, he, he is just a normal man, did some good stuff, did some bad stuff. I, like Chris is saying, I don't think there'll be an election. I'm saying even if he does win, what does it matter? Mm -hmm. It won't matter at yeah. all. It'll yeah. it'll validate my 20 Trump flags I have. You don't have any big, big MAGA guy. <laughs> big, yeah. huge MAGA Republican. Yeah. I got a lot of MAGA bags. Yeah. Written, uh, yeah, I mean. It, I, I bought those new gold shoes. Yeah. Oh, just God, God. What did he sell them for? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was a lot of money. Yeah. He sold them for a lot of money. <laughs> the gold shoes. Yeah. But, I mean, it goes to show, like, if anything, all these things, in my opinion, as far as for me, what it does for me is it allows me to continue to prepare spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, because right now, like you've been saying, you know, Ben, where it's like, now is the time while there is quote unquote peace yeah. to, to stock up your storehouses, yeah. to prepare your family, to learn the skills. Like that's the whole point of all these things. Trump was a blessing. That four years just bought us time. Yeah. And honestly, everyone's kind of like, oh, when's it going to happen? When's the, when's the balloon going up? When's the chair going against the wall, the proverbial chair going against the wall? It's like, you have gotten... To extra time to mm. get yourself squared away and don't just you know piss it away like he, use the time and i know it's easier said than done but anything is better than nothing yeah you know whether it's food whether it's training uh you know i i say this for gun stuff all the time like the good old days are today yeah they're they're actually not far away they're, they're right now yeah because in Two months, in two years, you're going to be like, man, those were the good old days. Yeah. And I should have bought X number of rounds, magazines, mm -hmm. whatever. Should have oh. bought my hollow sun. Yeah. <laughs> should have bought. Wait, I bought one. <laughs> should have bought so many hollow suns. Thank you, thank you for funding the CCP. Yeah. You're welcome. CCP is going to shut off all of our hollow suns at the same yeah. time. Yeah. It's okay. I got an LPVO. Oh. Is it really a solar or is it just a microchip tracker? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Awesome. Oh, all my pistols have hollow suns on them. <laughs> Yeah, they would <laughs> track every single Dude, one. Yeah, of it's like where's Chris? He always right here. There's four different GPS spots. <laughs> Dude, we can coordinate. We can triangulate you around. Can quad triangulate. Yeah. We know where all Chris's guns are. Yeah, exactly. Dude, you uh, should I do get, have an SRO on one of my pistols. I'll you keep should that get a one. street shark engraved on one of your lowers. You should get a street shark tattoo on your lower back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right above your butt crack. Okay, speaking of gun news, did you guys hear or watch the video that Lucas put out about Daniel Defense? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I seen it. All right. Well, what do you guys you think? I seen it. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he kind of already addressed it in the video, but he 
he basically said everything out loud that we were all thinking. Was like, if someone uh, hasn't watched it, go watch it. But give yeah. a, give a kind of overview as far so as. So basically, he went to, from what I understand, he went to Daniel Defense, talked to some of the owners and the marketing team. Basically, one to find out, hey, y'all have done some shady stuff as far as promoting 2A and the citizen citizens owning guns. Like, are you really about that? That's what he was trying to find out. And they kept trying to pitch different products or oh, try this product, try that product. He's like, no, that's not why I'm here. I want to actually find out if you guys are really about what you guys say you're about. So his conclusion was, yes, they are. Mm. But again, he's like, well, are they just giving us lip service because they're on this platform? He didn't talk to Marty Daniel. And Who's Marty, the owner. Yeah, Marty mm. Daniel is the owner. And he's the one that's been really in question. Uh, pushing some legislation. Definitely, he said that he did not want to disband the ATF. And everyone, rightfully so, jumped down his throat when he said that. Now, also keep in mind, Daily Defense has a ton of military contracts. Yeah. You know, he's probably looking out for his business. But again, at what cost? What What's your price? What's your price, Marty Daniel? Mm. You know? Because everybody in the, in the gun world, in the gun industry... If you unapologetically support citizens owning guns, you will do well. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he even said that 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 their marketing has shifted. Their their the people that purchase their rifles are primarily citizens over military contracts, mm. where it wasn't before. It was yeah. primarily military contracts. Mm. And props to Lucas. I mean, like he like he's actually tackling that issue. He actually cares about that, which is super important. Uh. I know you guys are like, oh, I hate Lucas Bach. No, not he's a, got teeny tiny arms. He doesn't a, work out. Not a, he is working out now. Yeah. All right. Well, he's working out. That's great. He's improving his bod. All right. Yeah. Um, he's mad, no, he's no street sus? shark. Yeah. I'm still thinking he's sus, bro. <laughs> I, I just. But that video is jam up. Yeah. <laughs> jam like, up. The, no cap. The video, no cap. the video didn't really provide many answers, honestly. Mm. I, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, he's it, not TBD to be determined. Yeah, I mean, he's not in business with them. There was no money yeah. exchange. Yeah. Uh, he's he's not carrying their products. He yeah. wants to. Lucas is also a sucker for military equipment. Like he likes it, and that's okay. I like it too. Mm. You know, I like running a saw. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like I like yeah. running that forty mic mic. Yeah, watching Cheeto dust explode everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, I get it. You know, there's some there's it's like the unobtainium gear, right? But I I don't think he's gonna find what he's looking for in Daniel Defense. Uh, the, I just it, don't. The, mm. the issue is you can't serve two masters. Nope. And yeah. when you're talking about military. Versus civilians with the political climate now, yeah. you almost yeah, you, gotta you have one. to pick a side. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you cannot play both sides. And right now, they're already facing a deficit trying to win back. Six hours playing both sides. Six hours. Yeah. Six hours unapolog- hour is yeah. playing every and side, and they're unapologetic about it. Yeah, yeah. They have all those contracts. Yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah. you beta test all their products. You yeah. Yeah. yeah, you are the <laughs> guinea pig. Yeah. Oh gosh, Sig. But what is Daniel defend? What did they say their new motto is? It's like oh yeah, so it's it says uh, it's like, God first and peasant d- second. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I think it's uh, uh, God first, defend freedom. Yeah, wow, that's like that. terrible if that's it. Hey, uh, yeah. go, ahead, go ahead and Google Daniel Defense's motto. No, they're probably like look up the most fud slogan we can find. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, dude. I, honestly, I say this, you know, because. They claim it to be a Christian company because the CEO is a believer and he's very outspoken, which is awesome. That's good, you know. But if you're going to say that you're a Christian company, it shouldn't be something where I feel like I do when I as a believer, I used to be this way, where it's like, oh, I, I never knew you were a Christian. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst insult like yeah, you can have right. as a believer. Like you should be very outspoken. And I think it's, you know, I'm sure Daniel Defense has maybe some good values, like a, a, as far as their workers and they probably hire a good, you know, group of folks. But, um, Man, you just gotta, like you said, you just gotta take a stand for your customer base. I feel like so many companies we talked about this are so out of touch with their customer base. It's like, why would you do that? Like, yeah, yeah. why would you make an RMRHD that goes over top of yeah. the? Do <laughs> any like, of you actually shoot? Yes. Do any of you yes. pick up a gun? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, why do four, you? Yeah, the, with, yeah. With the first off, why grip. are you still making that? Yeah. And second off. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be how they ship them. <laughs> Uh, so you can recognize it when it's on the news. 
Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's a dang yeah, good yeah. yeah. EOTech with a vertical grip all the way at the end of the barrel. Yeah. You knew that was fresh out the box. I'm pretty sure also when that one shooter actually had that, it was exactly the yeah. same configuration. Yeah, he never changed yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. That's because they bought it right from the friggin' factory. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, what does that say up there on the Daniel Defense? Uh, That's their old slogan, but he said that they were going to have a new slogan. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's supposedly coming out somehow, but... Uh, in, in their rebranding. Yeah. That's so funny. That's so preposterous. Freedom is the first word on your old slogan? Yeah. Freedom? Action, precision. Cut me a break. Oh, there's Marty this, himself right there. This is under their company values. Freedom, passion, precision. That's hilarious. See how come his room Hey, so what do you think about the H9? <laughs> Yeah. Is <laughs> it good? I've, I've never even shot I one. shot the old version. Was yeah. it good? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Apparently, it didn't hold up, but the I did a video on the Hudson 9, and I was like, man, like I knew, I knew when I first reviewed that gun that it was not going to stick around, but it's one of those guns that's the predecessor to something that does. Oh. You know, like what did uh, Han Solo's handgun, the broom handle? Yeah. Like uh, that gun was real. Yeah. It was super cool, but it was a predecessor to a lot of guns that came after that. 11 Luger. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff mm. came after it. So I imagine it's pretty good. Now they gutted the whole thing, so I, it's not very similar to the original, but... Um, Lucas didn't care for it. So. Yeah, well, that's all that matters. Uh, Marty does care for it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should hit up Daniel and have them pay us a lot of money to be able to review it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Just kidding. You, you know Daniel Defense was probably like they sunk a lot of money, a big chunk. Oh, yeah. And they were like, this did not turn out well. No. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I wanted to know what Daniel Defense thought they were going to get out of Lucas. Because they invited Lucas. They reached out to him, right? Mm. No, I, he I, he met them at Shot Show. They had a meeting, mm-hmm. and he said oh, they talked for only about an hour. And they're like, "We need to reconvene and talk about this." So they he drove to the facility with a bunch of staff, and they had a in depth two day meeting. Grantham was busy, so. super yeah, busy. Yeah. But. No, I mean back to that. I mean, honestly, I think uh, it, it's, again, it's easy to make fun of Lucas, jump on the bandwagon, all that, but. Uh, no, I think he did great in that video. He was very transparent, mm. you know, for whatever the reasons. That he hit on all those. If if what Daniel Defense is saying is true, then that's great. If, mm-hmm. they're, if right. they're willing to turn over a new leaf, I mean, we'll see through their actions and what they do and not just pay lip service. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate. I mean, I remember I was in the market and I was looking at Daniel Defense. Yeah. They have a lifetime warranty. You would. Like, How great would it be? Well, I mean, seriously, I when I buy firearms, I know they're going to go to my children. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how great would it be to have a whole arsenal of Daniel Defense weapons that have a lifetime you know, warranty? warranty. Yeah. That uh, that are arguably they are good rifles. Yeah. What Great is barrels, the? I mean, what is the other big thing that was the no no that they put them in the doghouse? Was it two was things? It, was it Kyle Rittenhouse because he used a Daniel Defense? No, Kyle Rittenhouse did not use a Daniel Defense. There was two things that put them in the doghouse that I know of. One was saying they support legislation that restricts um, people if, buying firearms. Yeah, basically but what it was. was. I forget yeah. the exact details of it, but they were like a proponent of stricter checks universal background checks something like that registration yeah and then in a interview with marty daniel and the director of the atf or somebody somebody in that high up they asked marty daniel do you believe that does your company believe do you believe that we should that the atf should be disbanded and he said, no, we do not believe that they should be disbanded. And then everybody that was, was in a, uproar. That was a congressional hearing. Yeah, yeah, it was a congressional hearing. Yeah. And let's be honest. I'll say it right now. The ATF should be disbanded. They should be gone. They are an unelected bureaucratic agency that is tyrannical. The ATF needs to go. I lo- and that's why I love Grantham. He's just so straightforward about it. Yeah. Did you see his video mocking the ATF, taking apart the Glocks? Yeah. He took mm-hmm. about, apart all the Glocks. And hey, he's just. That guy had 15 years' experience, okay? Yeah, I bet he did. 15 <laughs> yeah. years' experience just yeah. trampling people's rights. That's what he had 15 years' experience of. But, like, again, in the gun world, there is no wiggle room for, or you can't be wishy washy. You can't, you know, walk the line. It's of, a very small community. Yeah. Very small. And so, like, what happens in the gun community is news spreads very fast. And yep. so that's just something, like, you got to just pick a side, and you got to figure out where you stand. In fact, there are zero agencies that should exist. Like, all of it needs to be cleaned house. Oh, like, yeah. any law enforcement agency, it should be elected officials running those places. It should yep. not be 
you know, oh, yeah, this mayor put this chief in power. It's like that's how we end up having all of this problems that we have today is because of these agencies that have no oversight via Congress or they just don't care. They like, just they'll go the up question. And, yeah, they won't answer the question. No, that's classified. Yeah. And yeah. then it's like, OK, well, I need over I need oversight. To, I'm, I'm part of this committee to look into that. Oh, well, here's all, here's your documents all redacted. And it's yeah, like redacted. Who do you think you are? That's Congress. Like they don't here, care. Here's what I wish he would have said in the video is. Hey, I asked them if they would change if they could change their answer in that congressional mm. interview. Mm. Would you change your answer now? Ooh. And if their if their answer is still the same, then they're not. They are anti two A. Yeah, you cannot make a case otherwise. Yeah, like ask that question. Right. Like, hey, hey, have you? Do you regret any of the mistakes that you made to turn people off? Yeah. Well, like, did you they, ask that question? They didn't get to talk. Yeah, they didn't get to talk. Marty, he didn't get Marty Daniels smart. He I know, gotta, but even even the executives, I would still ask them that question, like the marketing. But people, see, like, they they all agreed with on, they all agreed with Lucas. Yeah. They all all the marketing, all the, the CEOs CEO, yeah. agreed with Lucas. It's Marty Daniel. Look yeah. at his mug up there. <laughs> well, th there were questions asked by some of the people that he brought with him that he couldn't dive into. Yeah, they, they did say that they did talk. Daniel, the, Daniel defense needs to address this. Mm, said, yeah. Yeah. Said, yeah. The guy Matt that he brought with him mm -hmm. was like, hammer, yeah. hammer, here's hammer. the thing. It, Why don't you the eyes, Mike? Do you the share eyes, Mike with I will say this: <laughs> the eyes are now on Daniel Defense, so well, you better either. Their prices a little bit too. Yeah. They, they, they want to really support the citizens. Yeah. You know, I hate to say it, but there's other companies that are actually putting guns in the hands of. I'll companies. tell you. Yeah. Do you know who's doing that? Palmetto State Armory. People can crap yeah. on Palmetto God, State. God bless Palmetto State Armory. But I mean, dude, they actually stand up for going against the ATF. They stand up for all the things that support the yeah, people. Yeah, but they sell hollow suns, I think. Oh, yeah. Mm, they yeah. sell all kinds of things. Hey, hey, hey I have they, a hollow sun. They have come out and said that one of the reasons they keep a lot of their rifles at their price point is so they can get AR-15s in as many hands of citizens. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. it. And they're also coming out with stuff that people like. I know. They're in touch they're with their customers. Their retro base. line's cool. Yeah. You uh, like everything they come out with. I, <laughs> I want a jackal so bad. Yeah. <laughs> a jackal. Dude, uh, I, I heard that mind. thing was garbage. What? Yeah. Lucas reviewed it. Yeah, what Brandon what did a whole review on the jackal. And? And, uh, well, some of it was the where the gas block was, that it wasn't running efficiently, especially mm. when you put a suppressor on it. But mm. once he adjusted that, it was fine. Okay. But I guess some of the screws had some wear and tear on it that were sus, bro. Mad sus? It? Mad they, sus. Mm. Mm. No cap on the screws? Yeah. So Honestly, hardware across the board has been kind of garbage. You know where it's know coming it's... from? China. Comes from China. China. <laughs> Okay, it's gonna be a bloodbath. A bloodbath <laughs> of hardware. Anyway, can we get Marty Daniels' stupid face off the computer? <laughs> I can stop <laughs> looking at it. Yeah, um, yeah. Palmetto, they're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Awesome. Yeah. Come on, let's yeah. give a round of applause. Yeah. Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Up. That's what I ended. Sons up of Liberty with. Gunworks is the new BCM. They are right, dude, hundred percent. And they also have like I think they're. A Roscoe, I'm gonna throw them in there. Yeah, Rob, dogs. Roscoe, you know, but they're they're building things that are at a good price point, but just high quality equipment. Yeah. Like, Speaking of which, I need to get a new Glock barrel from them. Roger that. Yeah, actually, uh, he's been begging me to get. He's like, just let me send you some Glock barrels, and I was like, all right, so sweet, good. I, I have a reason to ask. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I mean, um, it's just one of those things, though. Like, if you're in this industry, you, it, one news spreads fast, but two, you got to actually. Do what you say. The other thing, also, if you're going to claim to be a Christian company, don't be posting up pictures of half naked chicks. You know what I'm uh, saying? How many it. times do we see it? Oh, all the time. Oh, they do that? Yeah. <laughs> they, they do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The maybe, gun bunnies. Maybe Captain Planet should come by with his recycling basket. And smack <laughs> them recycle. Them. Hey, recycle these slutty women out of here. <laughs> yeah. He cares about they, the earth, right? They yeah. should do a whole calendar with just Jesus' disciples. Mm. 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 Man, Seth, that's not a bad idea. Hey, uh, Daniel Defense Marketing Team. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Yeah. So I will I will kind of shift gears here a little bit into um, the spiritual part. But I was reading in Second Samuel, and if you guys want to, you can look it on your phones. But it was Second Samuel chapter 23, and it's a section that talks about David's mighty men. Now, I don't, I don't know if you guys know this. But David had his like his all-star lineup team as far as like 
ultimate warriors that were just like the baddest dudes on the planet. All of his street sharks. Yes, all the street <laughs> sharks. Imagine being so like imagine being so dangerous and such a warrior that was so skilled that they literally mention you in the Bible just because to talk about, yep, he was he was he was a mighty man. You know, like crazy. So what's crazy is is he goes, there's only thirty three I believe 30, no, 30, yeah, 30 mighty men. Three of them were the original, like the the OG mighty men. And I'm talking like these dudes, like one guy slayed 800 dudes by himself. 800 dudes, hand-to-hand combat, killed him by himself. Um, but what's interesting is there was a mighty man by the name of Benaniah. So this is verse 20. And Benaniah, the son of Johadiah, was a valiant man of Kabzeel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two aerials of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. He struck down an Egyptian, a handsome man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, and Benaniah went down to him with a staff and snatched a spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. So what's, in, what's interesting, first off, is like, it's interesting to mention he's a handsome man. I wonder if it's a translation thing where it maybe says something different. Nope. Translation, one-to-one, handsome man. <laughs> but I want to go back to verse 20 where it says, Benaniah, the son of Johadiah, was a valiant man of Kabzeel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two aerials of Moab. When you look at that verse, and I click on the footnotes, and this is for every translation that says aerials, 23, verse 20, it says in the footnotes, the meaning of the word aerial is unknown. That's because mm. it was either a manticore or a freaking dragon. I guarantee it. It was a manticore. So yeah. I looked up on the internet what is an aerial, and according to Jewish legend and lore, <laughs> it is a mythological creature who is half lion, half man. That's a manticore. That's what a manticore is. So my, you know, we we listen. And I listen to blurry creatures a lot, but like in the Bible, it talks about there's a lot of creatures that exist that are talked about in mythology, Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of ancient cultures have these chimeras who are like half half animal, half person, or dragons or things that are mythological creatures. But the Bible also mentions these mythological creatures, so it begs the question: Did they really exist when the Nephilim came in Genesis six? Were they not only interfering with man, but also interfering with all creation and creating hybrid beings? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you read about the throne room of God, all the weird animals up there. I mean, yeah. it's not far fetched. Yeah. You know, like stuff goes extinct, stuff goes away. I guarantee you there was dragons back then. I don't believe in dinosaurs, by the way. Don't think no, no, I do. No. No. Mm-hmm. no. Yeah. There was no dinosaurs. T Rex didn't run 35 miles per hour or whatever they said. Yeah, like Goldblum said so. Yeah, yeah like di- no, I, I don't uh, believe in dinosaurs. Nature. It finds a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sure does. It also finds a way to make stuff up. Like gosh, dinosaurs. There are dinosaurs on the ark, Ben. No. I saw them. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, hey, wait, you, you went to the creation museum. Wasn't yeah. it legit? Oh, or the yeah. Ark Encounter is what you went yeah, to. Did you see any dinosaurs on the Ark? Uh, absolutely. What, alligators, crocodiles? No, they were legit dinosaurs. What, what like what Triceratops? I'll bring the book in, Ben. There's a whole there's a whole slew of well, these animals. We did, remember, tell them about the footprint. Dino drop droppings? Droppings. <laughs> <laughs> so last last week, was it last week on the last podcast we talked about the footprint with the yes, giant with the foot. human footprint? There's a dinosaur footprint that's fossilized in the mud, and on top of the dino footprint, is a massive, I'm talking massive, six-toed human footprint on top of it. Hmm. Hmm. It was at the uh, I Creation think Museum. that the this thing was standing next to it, petting it. Because <laughs> the footprints are so close it together. It was huge, dude. It yeah. was big. And so, yeah, here we go. XA is pulling it up right now. Go, yeah, to go the ahead Genesis and pull Park. that up. Oh, someone made that. That looks like a kindergartner put a print in Look the mud. Look at that, dude. <laughs> no. That's a raccoon footprint. No. So, like... <laughs> Right. And that's an ostrich footprint. Dude, that is You're huge. Baby. Yeah. But here's the thing is, I mean, if you talk about dinosaurs in the Bible, dinosaurs, the word dinosaur came out only in the 18th century. But in the past, we talked about how the, bi- di- or the Bible mentions dragons and jackals and all these other things. Those were flipping dinosaurs. Like at the end of the day, like every ancient culture has giant serpent-like creatures that can breathe fire every ancient culture doesn't matter where you're at not just china or japan but in south america and so you have all of these cultures that are saying these beasts and these things existed 
There was a freaking thing in Mexico where they dug up all these ancient artifacts, and it was a dude riding a triceratops, like, on a saddle. Look at oh, that. They drew it? No, it was a carving. Like, it was uh, like a like a thing that they made, like a little idol. That was probably made was in 2007, and oh, they just gosh. found it? it. Just look up dinosaur idol with human. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's just... It's one of those things where I think that... I need you to go ahead and look up a uh, guy around a Triceratops. Yeah. So here we go. The Akambaro figures. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to see this image better. Ancient <laughs> origins. Look at that thing. Guys, this was made like last year. Now, look it's at like that. like a knight riding, look at him. <laughs> riding uh, it. I think my son yeah. made that in pottery class. Yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> dude. I'm just pottery. saying. God. Mm, You're talking about that, a cave drawing? That looks like no, Loki. So that, that, that looks like Loki. Loki so, from I'm freaking. Do you know, do you know um, who's that one guy that you actually gave me the thing where it's about the, the hollow earth? Who's the dude that funded that documentary? Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know. I know what you're. So, talking anyways, about. his he has a crew of Christian expedition archaeologists in Mexico. They're digging tons of this stuff up, and they're also digging up things that are Egyptian hieroglyphics on these artifacts that are in Mexico, and also UFO-looking things that they're digging up. And they're and the government's been trying to hide it. Specifically, the Smithsonian has been trying to come in and interfere and, and take it away. You think to hide the Bible? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, at the end of the day, all this stuff, what this does to me is if I see that they have dinosaur figurines and stuff like that, what does science tell us? That humans and dinosaurs never existed. It was millions of years apart. And it's like, no, if creation is true, according to what the science is, it is true. We already know it's the truth. But if they have these things, that means that there was humans and dinosaurs side by side because they were all created at the same time and they all existed with each other especially in the biblical times. The other thing I also read about was in Samuel, when Absalom is being chased, who's David's son, and they go and Absalom rebels with Israel against King David. King David has to flee Israel, goes to Judah. Anyways, he, he gets Joab to um, command the armies of Judah to fight against Israel. It's a civil war. They go into the forest of Endor. I think it's Endor? Um, and it says that 20,000 soldiers died and it said that the forest claimed more lives than the sword so how's that possible unless there are uh, creatures and, and animals imagine dude imagine rodents if, of unusual size i'm just saying if there's <laughs> dinosaurs in the forest because they lived at the same time as human beings animals or attacking any type of creature that we're just be. not talking well, i guarantee about. you it wasn't friggin triceratops over there i'm just saying mm. i'm just saying i think that it's I think it's very highly probable that God created some crazy things and a lot of stuff went extinct, either through hunting or through after the flood, the the atmosphere, which is not able to sustain the same type of life pre-flood. Um, but at the end of the day, what that does prove is it proves that the Bible is true, that all things were created at the same time. Every crawling, living thing was also created, you know, at the same time of Adam, and Adam had dominion over all these creatures. So what the science is going to try a quote-unquote science, which is not, it's garbage. They're going to try and do is they're trying to separate that fact. And if this goes against, this this artifact literally goes against the mainstream narrative, that it exists. Mm. And so what do you do to make sure that it stays the mainstream narrative? You get rid of that, and you you make it seem so stupid that, like, oh, that's totally fake. Because guess what? The mainstream narrative literally said that is fake. Hmm. Chris <laughs> really likes to believe, though, that people rode on dinosaurs and pedestals. Oh yeah. You know what I would do Captain to Planet. to make that fake if I were the if I were the Smithsonian or something? I would just pay some little kid to be like, "Hey, that's my sculpture." <laughs> and everyone would be like, "Yeah, it's your sculpture." Yeah. <laughs> Where's Could you the imagine bones? being the Smithsonian? You you dig everything up and you're like, "Man, we're running out of things to dig up. What are we going to do for yep. funding? Yep. We got to yeah. get we got to get some new stuff." Like they we build, already dug it up. <laughs> they build more museums and more Smithsonian museums and they can just charge people for entrance. You know, yeah. they could just display all the giant bones that they've Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, my my, my whole years. my whole point though for bringing up that verse in 2 Samuel about this mighty man who was part of David's mighty men destroying these two aerials is that the spiritual realm is very real. And what we do here in the modern day church is we just pretend like it's some voodoo stuff, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you're dealing with, yeah, let me pray against that or whatever. Like, it's just like it's just, you know, small talk. It's like not real. It's kind of make believe. The spiritual realm, especially in ancient times during the Old Testament, the spiritual beings were very real, and in fact, they were physical. They, they came in and out of this realm. So we have to also think about today, 
how real is spiritual realm and how real is spiritual warfare, it is very real, and it happens all the time. Um, you know, in fact, we're probably all going through it right now in some way in our own lives. I saw a great analogy by a person that was really smart, and they were talking about the different dimensions. And the way they used to describe it was two hardbound books. So you take two hardbound books and take, you know, a bunch of sheets of regular notebook paper. Mm. Take a marker, and that's your veil between the two hardbound books, your physical realm, your spiritual realm. Yeah. And your prayers, everything, you you know, your prayers and your thoughts, your your energy, your vibe, whatever you want to say— Take a marker, let it bleed through those stack of papers, and mm. that's what it's like breaking through the veil mm. into into another dimension. I was like, man, that's like a great illustration of what it's probably like. Like, yeah. we know this is real, we know this is real. Yeah. But there's something separating why you can't get through back and forth. Yeah, we know the spiritual side; they can get back and forth, but yeah. for humans, you know, we're kind of stuck here. Mm. Psychedelics. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's yeah. That they're they're literally looking through that curtain. So that that would be a different type of marker. Yeah, it's a rainbow going, colored one. Yeah, going through. Yeah, but I think it's it's one of those things where if we're for believers, and this is something that we've talked about before, when you start following God and you start reading your Bible and you start praying, you and you and then you start witnessing like God calls us to do to tell the truth to others that are around you. You're now going on the offensive, and you are drawing a line in the sand. You're putting on that helmet of salvation, and you're identifying what side you're on. And that's why God constantly tells us with the armor of God to put on the armor of God in defense of the attacks that are going to be coming towards you. So, you know, it, it, prayer is one of those things. It's our it's our biggest weapon, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we, one, I am trying to become more diligent in prayer to where it's almost like a drill, like we were shooting today, using a shot timer and just reacting. As soon as something comes into life, I just immediately jump into that prayer session. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I had a verse that I wanted to look up, because Jesus is talking about <clears throat> dealing with the situation, but he says, for this, you need prayer, like I have to pray in this situation. And I wanted to look up the verse reference. Yeah. Uh, so I can read it, but I have to find it first. While he's looking for that, have you guys had any experiences recently with spiritual warfare that you'd be willing to share about? Hmm, not too much recently, other than uh, maybe just my friends, like you guys, hearing from you guys and what you're going through. Yeah. My life's pretty darn good. <laughs> but nice. Like, oh, it's been great. <laughs> Everybody listening is like, who's oh, this jerk? <laughs> Doesn't even believe in dinosaur models. <laughs> yeah. Ben's, Ben's been on vacation. He's just <laughs> sitting on the fence, just not rocking the boat. Just yeah. having just a good time. Just soaking up the sun. Hey. Hanging out with the manatees. Hey, you know. just hanging out, petting a manatee once in a while. <laughs> Sick. Well... One thing that I said... What are they going to do? Ephesians 6.12, it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. 2 Corinthians 10.4, For the weapons of our warfare are not of flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. I mean, it goes to show, like, if as a believer, we have to put our hope in, in Jesus Christ and also understand who is the fight really against. You know, we have all the stuff we talk about, the headlines, about all how the world's falling apart, and that's to be expected. Yeah, Things matter. of this world are going to fade away because they're of this world. Because it's trash. It is, and it's coming to an end, but it's easy to get sucked into being distracted by that and thinking that it is our fight that we have to fight, when in, in reality— our fight is spiritual, and we need to be obedient, open our mouths, and try and do what God tells us, which is to preach the gospel. So and when Eric's talking about spiritual warfare, don't a lot a lot of times, and I've been in this, I'm talking to myself here. A lot of times we like to chalk things up to spiritual warfare, and a lot of times it's just our own dumb fault. True. We can't get out of our way, our flesh is in the way, ourselves are in the way, our pride's in the way. You know, we give a lot of credit to the enemy, and the enemy's like, I'm not really doing anything. You're the moron here. Um, so that that's also part of the equation. I've experienced yes. a lot of that in my life. I'll be the first one to say it. Mm. Um, but then spiritual warfare, it seems like when spiritual warfare happens, like, you know you're in it. Yeah. Like, if, if you never, like, you've, you know what it looks like when you see it. Yeah. Right? So. 
Yeah, it's definitely, and I think it goes back to the combat experience we talked about in Ukraine. Like those guys that are going through that, they're gaining those experiences to now where they can pick up on things. They know when attacks coming. They can see the cues. They can look at the evidences. It's the same when it comes to spiritual attack. You can usually start to identify as you start to mature in your faith. Like, okay, is this me messing up, and this is me, you know, tripping over my own feet? or me deliberately not listening to the Lord, and I'm going down this briar bush, and I'm going to get stabbed and poked? Or is this, everything's going good, I'm li- listening to the Lord, I'm praying, I'm, I'm interceding for people, and then all of a sudden, something comes out of left field, and it's like, boom. You know what I'm saying? And it can come physically, it can come through depression, it can come through all these ways, but you have to, if you're not in the Word, and you're not reading Scripture, and you're not praying— it's going to be hard to identify what is truly a spiritual attack versus what is just yeah. your own fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let me give you an example. I found the verse. So it says, this is uh, Mark nine twenty five through 29. It says, when Jesus saw the crowd that a crowd was running to the scene, <clears throat> he rebuked the impure spirit, you deaf and mute, mute spirit. He said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed, him violently and it came out the boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead but jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up to his feet and he stood up after jesus had gone indoors his his disciples asked him privately why couldn't we drive it out and he replied this this kind can only come out by prayer Mm. yeah that verse is always so fascinating it's like because it alludes to there's different kinds Mm -hmm. they have different power structure you know some are stronger than others there's different tactics involved Mm mm-hmm yeah, so to your to your guys' example, like that's a Jesus I think is the obviously the best way and the best example of spiritual warfare. Cuz he knew when to use prayer and when to actually speak something into existence or command it. Um whether that has something to do with the authority cuz we have authority for these things. And that's an important pro- point too. I think spiritual warfare has a lot to do with your authority and what God has given you as far as your authority. So specifically, like, obviously I have the authority to pray over my own home because God has given me that authority, that worldly authority over my family, over my home, over my property, right? So I have authority to speak in that. There were times where Paul went anyway or did something and he got shipwrecked or it because it wasn't in his authority to do whatever it was he what he god hadn't actually led him into that but he did it anyway because he felt like he was supposed to do it on his own strength and it didn't turn out the way that he wanted to so i think our authority and what god gives us as our authority plays a big part into spiritual warfare because you have to be called to do something you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like I mean, there's, like, I love my parents, but a lot of the time they, you know, went full-fledged into doing something, but God hadn't really led them to do that. Yeah, oh, sick they, burn. But they decided to do it anyway, and, like, all of these, they had, like, a, just a ton of, like, just backlash as a result of it. Like, out of good intention, sure, but it's like, God needs to lead you into those battles. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, if you're not... Like, some people just like, well, I'm just going to go to Africa, and I'm just going to pre- preach the gospel. It's like, all right, well, is God leading you into that? Like, is that something that's a calling on your heart, or is that just your good intentions of doing that? I can talk to that, and specifically my brother, he's a missionary, and he says that he sees it all the time, where people are like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be a missionary. And it's like, God has specific roles and paths for your life. And so that's why, you know, we also, I pray specifically, like, God, open the door that I'm supposed to walk through, and I'll be obedient and walk through that door you know, um, but when you try, even if it's in the ministry, it's like, yeah, I'm going to go be a missionary. It's like, no, you're not supposed to do that. Well, I'm going to go be a missionary anyways. And so he says, we see it all the time where you have like people who are like on, like, I'm going to be a missionary and this is that and the other thing. They're not really praying that much, but they want to go and travel or whatever. And they end up burning out within seven months. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like there are people who are given that task to be missionaries and there's other people who are given the task to be missionaries at home, you know, yep. in their neighborhood. We're all supposed to be proclaiming the gospel, but some of us are supposed to be where we're at, you know, and still being obedient and proclaiming the gospel in that way. A lot of times people will see, you know, somebody else, and they'll be like, oh, well, Eric's a missionary, so I know I should be a missionary too. It's like, no, 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 that's Eric's, that's Eric's role, that's mm-hmm. Eric's job. Or they'll be like, oh, Ben, Ben's in the gun industry, I want to go be in the gun industry. It's like, 
no, that's not your role. I, I've personally been in situations like that. It's like, well, you know, I think I'm just going to go do this job mm. or, or go live here. And like Eric says, you, I pray the same thing, like shut that door. I don't want it mm -hmm. if you don't want me to have it because I've seen the opposite. You know, it's it's like the verse says, God knows the desires of your heart and, and he'll direct your path. Yeah. Man will make his own ways in his head, but Lord, please direct my path, right? You know, so a lot of times we see other people and we think, oh, that's for me too. Mm -hmm. Or they start comparing themselves to that person yeah. when it's not your race, that's not your calling, that's not your job. And if you, know? you, if you ever get dismayed, Watch the movie Rudy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And just think about that. He sat on the sidelines. He worked his tail. He put it. He worked his tail off. He put in the work, every practice, every game, and sat there. You know, ultimately it paid off. And I think everybody will have that Rudy moment in their lives. Oh but man, you I, have to be okay yeah. with being on the sidelines until. I'm God more of a radio. <laughs> Yeah, I like remember the Titans. I'm, I'm more of a Bobby Bobby Boucher. <laughs> yeah, I'm the water boy. I'm more of a water boy. <laughs> I will say yeah. that when Radio lost his mom, I cried straight up. <laughs> oh, I, but that's true that though. We're not all called to be the starting quarterback, you know, right <laughs> oh. off right off the rip. No, you everyone's know? got different parts and, and yeah. pieces to play. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and even if that does happen, it's like God can use those things to help you learn. Like I'm sure, like mom and dad, if you're watching this, they've probably <laughs> learned not. from They're a lot not. of. <laughs> We're not watching, son. <laughs> they probably learned a lot from their mistakes because God has taught them about spiritual authority and being led by the Holy Spirit rather than sometimes our good intentions, which yeah. are different. Mm. Like we can separate the two. Yeah, yeah. I sense. do. I mean, I do think that God, God made, God knows us exactly how we are supposed. He knows us better than we know ourselves. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like Thank He God. gave us the directions and He gave us the desires that we have because He created us that way. And so I think that those desires and those passions and those interests are all by His design, and He wants to use them because He made you that way. He wants to use them for His kingdom, but you have to be willing to let him open the door, and you have to be praying and in the Bible to understand when those doors are open, if that's him, and also be willing to accept when doors close to be like, okay, I'm not going to go through that. And when it, those doors close and us trying to force our way through, he's not going to keep keeping it closed. If you keep pushing on it, he'll say, all right, fine, go. And then maybe you'll learn your lesson and come back and go through the door I have for you. That's one, going to be 10 times better because I made you this way and gave you this desire. Yeah. This is the way I need you to go through. And most of the time, we try and force our way into doors that we think are the best ones that are already closed, and we're just mm -hmm. not realizing that God has closed that door. So, you know, I wanted to read Daniel chapter 10, and the reason for this is it is a perfect picture. It blew my mind when it came to the reality of spiritual warfare and the effect it has on, on us as humans. So in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding in the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man, dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Uphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice was like the sound of a multitude. So like a pretty in, intimidating figure from heaven. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it. Excuse me. But such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So people with him, they can't see what's going on, but they can feel it. Mm. They can feel there's a spiritual presence. There's something there, but he's invisible because he's not in this realm. They can see him. Then I heard, or excuse me, I was left alone gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees, so he's still terrified. He said, Daniel, you are highly esteemed. Consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up, for now I have been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. So this is something also, it's like there's a difference between being afraid 
like demon fear, like scary stuff in the dark, and also being afraid because something is so intense and so intimidating and so powerful that it makes you terrified, right? Um, so he's still terrified because his being is so intense. And it said, uh, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Now understand, he's been fasting for three weeks and praying and, and calling on God. And so at the very beginning, when he started his fast and his prayer, God heard his message, right? And it says, But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. There's other one that says the prince of Persia, which was essentially what he's saying is, is there's an angel so intimidating that Daniel has no strength, he can't stand to be around him, goes, sent by God, to go answer, like, hey, you're the messenger, go tell Daniel this message I have for you. He goes to Daniel, but where Daniel's at in Persia, and Babylon, is owned by demonic forces, and the demonic force, the demon, is so strong, he's battling this angel, that the angel has to call for help from heaven to help him fight through this demonic presence, like this demonic force that owns this territory. And it says, Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the prince of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you, here's the message. It took me 21 days to get here because I had to fight through all this stuff. I'm now here. Here's the message. Now I've come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. The one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth, and I began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord. I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed. He said, Peace, be strong now, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. So he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia, and when I go, the prince of Greece will come. So another demon is going to come help the prince of Persia. But first I will tell you what is written in the Book of Truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. So I literally have to tell you this message, which he tells in the following chapter, and I have to leave to go help Michael, because Michael is currently engaged in combat. Real spiritual combat, real happening, physical fighting in that realm— and I got to get back, tell you this message real quick, and then get back to help him because he's holding it open for me. What does that look like, do you think? Dude, like... Them fighting. Yeah, and no one can really die. Like, they're immortals. So, like... Well, here's mm -hmm. the thing. That doesn't say that because think about this. It says, why does God have an army? Is it for no reason? Or is it to engage in combat? Why does God say, put on the armor of God? Gives us a sword. Angels come with swords. Yeah. Maybe why? they can be, like, pushed back to the... Back to hell who knows the one thing also to think about these are all kind of rhetorical questions but like in the garden <laughs> of eden in the garden <laughs> of eden what does god place at the garden of eden when adam and eve are kicked flaming off sword. flaming sword Got their hair quicker flaming Why? sword a lightsaber is it for <laughs> is it for the human beings they're going to try and come back and find the garden of eden or is the tree of life still there it needs to be guarded and it's being guarded by a flaming sword that goes back and forth against who who's that flaming sword for you know who wasn't going back to the Garden of Eden? Shard. Adam and Eve. Dinosaurs, because they didn't exist. <laughs> they were there. I think it's just, it's like a different dimension that's there. Yeah. Or, a, or a realm that we can't see. Could be like a part Headed of by it. the veil. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. I've heard a lot of uh, theologians talk about that on Blurry Creatures, talking about how it's it's not a place that's physically located on Earth, but it's like... Yeah, dimensions, it's man. A, it's in a different dimension everything's or wavelengths. area that was set aside for humans. You've been I wonder if it was the on, Maybe it was on the Earth. Everything's frequency. It was on the Earth, but it's just no longer visible in our Correct. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, who knows at the end of the day. The, the biggest point of it all is that as believers, we are engaged in very real spiritual combat. We have to be standing strong. Right now, the world is falling apart, but the kingdom of heaven is still strong. And so we have to be willing and open to be bold and to speak the truth um, to the people around us. Because, I mean, there's people in my family and there's people that we all love in our families and friends that we know could use the gospel and need need salvation. So. Mm -hmm.
Absolutely. And just like everything else we talk about, like, is there such a thing as too much dry fire? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. N- no. There's not. <laughs> the answer is no. There's, no, Seth. <laughs> there's no such thing as too much prayer. Yeah. Or reading scripture. You can never do enough. So anytime you're like, oh, I'm doing, like, you can do more. Yeah. I mean, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Mm-hmm. So that means without stopping. Yeah. I had to look that up. So don't buy that. Any, anyways, any final got thoughts, guys, before we close out the podcast? I think uh, shark bait down there should lead us off, huh? Ooh, shark bait. I like shark that one bait, better Shark than... street shark. <laughs> Which one is it, guys? Captain you, Planet. Can we you need to make a decision. You, <laughs> I like Captain Planet. I just want to yell Captain Planet. Yeah. Can you imagine mom and dad watching this podcast right now? They're like, Steve, the, the boys are on the podcast again. <laughs> They're on the show on they Kelly. They keep calling Chris Shark Street. <laughs> Chris, Chris, is shark play, street. Chris is playing Captain Planet again. And what do you mean by we went through some bad decisions? What's yeah. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> He says he loves us, hey, but we're they bad. They will admit that they made some bad choices. Uh, I don't think they will. Christopher, this is why Ben is our favorite. Uh, oh, yeah. that's oh, not God. true. Chris has always true. been the favorite. I'm 100% What did you, what did you call him before? Butterbean Brown or something? Butterbean. <laughs> BB Gun. <laughs> BB Gun. That was your nickname in soccer. Middle school so- soccer was BB Gun. I don't think that's true at all. BB Gun. It was He's just. A, it was. And here it comes BB Gun on the field. Oh, there's little <laughs> BB Gun. Butter Brown. BB Butter Brown. Butter Brown. Butter Brown. Uh, my final was, thoughts uh, about yeah, Brown and Constellation speak. Brown. Yes. If you're gonna, and also whatever you say as final thoughts, it has to Chris, be in a what accent? Uh, a Portuguese accent. Mm. Would you ban? I don't even know what that sounds like. That's dude. why you I picked give it. Me an example. Yeah. No, no, no. Just give it to us. Also, I'm gonna give you Marty Daniels' question. Would you ban the ATF? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> C. <laughs> I would also ban them from ever establishing any kind of organization like that ever again. Yep. Yeah, I would put safeguards in place, checks and balances, if you will. From other three-letter agencies? No, that's a good point. I would abolish those as well. Mm. Good follow-up question, Josh. All right. Uh, Do you want to know my final thoughts? Yes. My final thoughts, especially pertaining to spiritual warfare, is you gotta you got to protect yourself and what you're bringing into your house and what you're putting into Mm. your mind. Yeah. Shows, TV shows. Music. Music is huge. Um, Seth recently encouraged me to cut out all secular music, which I'm trying oh, to do. Oh, Seth. Yeah. So that's been great. Um, but yeah, shows, movies, especially now in yeah. our culture, that's just actively pushing the stuff. It's trying to get in. I mean, it's social media. Get, social media. Yeah, that's like the worst. The cultural trend right now is like, let's promote Satan, let's promote satanic things, and they are just putting it in there, but it's not... Some of it's super blatant, but other is, like, in between the lines. Mm-hmm. And you really got to protect yourself. Yeah, Taylor Swift. What you, yeah, what you put yeah. in your mind, because what you put in your mind kind of takes hold in your heart. So I would encourage believers to do that, is keep yourself guarded, you know, obviously take in things that are going to be nourishment to your soul, right? Praying, reading the Word, and guarding against what you're watching, what you're putting in your mind. Amen. Hmm. Uh, final, <laughs> final thought: Dinosaurs are fake. Uh, no, Marty no. Daniel should resign. Yeah, <laughs> just sell the company to the. I'm uh, sorry, mom and dad, for Chris's <laughs> performance down here. Yeah, uh, um, spiritual warfare. Also, this is the this is the biggest spiritual warfare I usually see, for me. And when I resist my flesh, when I resist things like. Secular music is a good one. Resisting, like, you know, obviously the blatant stuff's easy to resist. The secret stuff, like the 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 stuff that's sub- notes, the subliminal <laughs> stuff, yeah, Private eyes, yeah, they're walking, yeah, you. you know, like all that stuff. When you resist it, it seems like that stuff tries to push itself on you that much harder, mm. you know. And that's the real spiritual warfare. It's like the more I resist the flesh, the more I feel that flesh. Trying, trying to grab me. You have to master. You have to put it to death, Benjamin. You put it to death, but also, I find it easier to fight when I'm conscious of it. When I know, okay, there's going to be pushback from that. Yeah. So it's like it's like bracing for the punch, bracing, mm-hmm. you know, knowing the Waiting next for move. The counterattack. Yeah, yeah, being ahead in the moves. Don't buy Hollow Sun Optics. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. All right, you're better than that. Okay, you deserve better than that. No. All right.
Um, just kidding. I own some Hall Sun optics, unfortunately. Mm. Buy unfortunately. whatever you can. Go out there, buy as many guns as you can, as much ammo as you can, your mags as you can. Again, this is the good old days. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to fight. You know, legislation. Your kids will appreciate you buying this stuff now. Yeah. You know, my parents never bought guns when I was a kid. <laughs> really trashing our parents. <laughs> yes, fuck. Yes. I love my mom and dad. I don't know. You. Yeah. Uh, we're we're even. We weren't even fed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we couldn't watch X Men. We couldn't watch <laughs> The Simpsons. Well, no way. We were watching The Simpsons. No. Did you chance. watch Street Sharks? Honestly. Were you allowed to play with Pogs? No. no, dude. I know that pogs are like that's demon coins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> demon coins. I've never heard that. <laughs> well, Seth, uh, they yeah. are. Oh, what you playing, pocket monsters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, those cards were cool back. Then. I had pogs. They had Michael Jordan on them. Like, yeah, demon Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, sacrificed his dad. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, but those are, those are my final thoughts, Eric. Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Anytime. See you tomorrow. Whatever, yeah. Seth. When's tomorrow. Roy coming back? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully so, soon. Actually, you, yeah. You need to pray for Roy. Here's a prayer request, actually, for Barrel and Hatchet. One, that God opens some doors for us, or opens the only door for us to be able to find a new home. Two, Roy pulled us back today. Uh, he's actually at the hospital. So um, they are trying to figure out what's going on, but he hurt his back really bad. So most likely, I'll be teaching the class this Friday. Ben's coming putting you on the spot uh to come hang out and help out so uh, we'll be excited to see those guys in class but um yeah pray for him and then also pray for brown hatchet's direction for finding a new home god knows exactly what we need and we want to make sure that the door is very obvious that we walk through um and then my final thoughts in general if you're going to buy a bunch of stuff buy a hard copy of a bible um, mm, you know, we use yeah. this app, and right now AI, AI has already been developing its own translations of the Bible and Adjusting. inserting verses that, you know, kind of fit the worldview better, uh, very more accepting. So eventually, the Bible hard copy will be banned, I guarantee it. It will be something that will be punishable by death if you have one. Um, so right now is a time to buy a Bible. Buy own, 10. G yeah, get several. If you even have to get pocket Bibles, they're cheap. You can go in for like a couple of bucks. Pass them out to people. Pass them out to people. Give them out. Um, it is, the Bibles does not, you know, God's Word does not come back void. So go out there, make sure you're bold, continue to be a believer for the Lord that is being obedient and you're talking to your family and your friends and your loved ones and your coworkers about the gospel because it is the most important thing and also the best way to really truly be prepared to be um you know saved and be in the kingdom of god so brothers and sisters out there listening thanks for checking out a hatchet cast podcast everybody here thank you for coming and make sure that you are not a liability but you are an eternal asset to everyone around you mm. see you on the next one Hit the applause button. Is there a fun button? Hey, nice. Dude, I, I, the whole time, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you did you did yeah. 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 Why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> because you would have hit it every time. Oh my! Yeah. 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 Street shark. Yeah. 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 Hey, Seth, are you serious? <laughs> Uh, that was there the whole time? Yes. He's uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>